In July, Revolve traveled to Almeria in southeastern Spain to catch up with the progress being made in the water mining project's case study 2 and the living lab that's been established there. At the Plataforma Solar de Almeria, our partners from CMAT are researching how solar thermal energy can be used to fuel a desalination process that harvests valuable raw materials from the brine it produces. These include salt, as well as minerals that can be used as fertilizers. Coupled together, this approach helps to bring down the environmental impacts of desalination and contributes to a more circular economy. Yeah, with, with climate change and with uh, increased population, the requirements of water are increasing in many regions in the world. And the only way to get additional sources of water is by desalination, because 98% of the water on Earth is saline water. But desalination is a process that requires energy. And if we start increasing desalination and building desalination plants, we will start increasing energy consumption. We don't want that energy consumption to come from fossil fuels because that will have a carbon impact. So the increase of desalination industry and the booming of, of desalination plants, we want to do it with solar energy, which is a decarbonized energy. I think it's very important that we increase the water resources of society without increasing the carbon footprint of it. The circularity of our case study is that we consider a holistic approach in desalination. So the residue of desalination, which is brine, is something that we can valorize and end up with zero liquid discharge, meaning that we are obtaining not only desalinated water, but valuable salts. In our case, since we use seawater, the most common salt in seawater is sodium chloride. We extract pure sodium chloride, which is of high value. But we can also extract magnesium and other fertilizers from seawater that are valuable for farming because farmers need water, but they also need fertilizers and fertilizers are becoming more and more expensive. So if we can add the fertilizers to the water, taking the fertilizers from wastewater, which is brine, then we have added circularity in the desalination process. And that's what we aim. We aim not just to extract water, but to extract valuable materials from the residue of desalination, the desalination which is brine. The case study consists on a, a multi-effect desalination plant that can uh, achieve zero liquid discharge uh, processes because it can uh, achieve very high concentration factors uh, compared with the traditional or the conventional desalination technology that is reverse osmosis that is more limited with these uh, concentration factors. In this uh, case study, we are, uh, we are using a pretreatment based on nanofiltration in order to pretreat the feed water that is pumped to the multi effect desalination uh, process uh, to uh, make this, this technology, the multi-effect desalination technology, more efficient. This case study, apart from uh, proving the use of thermal desalination system to achieve zero liquid discharge processes, we are doing that with solar energy. That is the more sustainable way to, to do it. The fact is that the energy sector and the desalination sector has to be decarbonized because the use of uh, fossil fuels, we know that they emit uh, greenhouse uh, gases to the atmosphere. This is the, the main fact, no? And uh, we, uh, here at PSA, uh, we investigate the coupling, the integration of desalination with solar energy that is totally feasible. In November 2022, a CS2 Living Lab was launched to engage local stakeholders who might one day be putting these technologies to use. This Living Lab will continue to operate after the water mining project has come to a close. Guillermo Zaragoza, the head of the Living Lab, tells us more. The Living Lab is focused on sustainable desalination. We have four goals. Uh, decarbonize the desalination industry, uh, implement a circular economy in desalination, use seawater as a source of scarce materials, and in general, uh, improve the water energy food nexus. The Living Lab, by definition, is an environment of co-creation with the stakeholders. In our Living Lab, we have the stakeholders involved in the process of desalination and the uses of the desalinated water. So we have farmers, we have water authorities, 
We have desalination plant operators, desalination uh, companies, and society in general. We, we also have uh, environmental groups. So we cover all the aspects of the implementation of the technology. It is very important that the research that we do is transparent in a sense that users participate in the process of co-creations from the very beginning. So that when the implementation comes, they've been on board and they've been able to choose and decide and guide us and co-create with us. Because those are the ones that will implement the technologies for them. So it's very important that they're part of the implementation process since the very beginning. The impact that the research that we're doing here has on local authorities and regulators is more important when we do it with co-creation. Because we can see the barriers from the beginning and they can help us. Sometimes scientific implementation or technical implementation has barriers that are not technical. And they work with us on, on, on the implementation. An example is the, the case of using desalinated water in agriculture. There should be some kind of certification that farmers are using renewable water instead of using water from overexploited aquifers or underground water which is depleting the aquifers. So the authorities are working with us on developing this kind of a certification that farming is done with renewable water. The Almeria case study is demonstrating sustainable and more circular solutions when it comes to meeting society's growing demand for water. It is one of six different water mining case studies up and running across Europe. Go to waterminingeu to find out more.